Hi, thank you for tuning in on another one of my videos. This is James from BecauseYouWantToKnow.com and today we're going to be discussing an issue that is kind of personal to me. All right, um, This particular issue has to do with fantasy football. Now anyone who's watched any of my videos in the past, I've probably told you that I love football. Actually I love sports in general, but I really do love football. Um, and I play uh, fantasy football on a site called DraftKings. Now, anybody who's, in, who's you know, been involved in fantasy football, what DraftKings is, there's actually two major companies out there. There's a whole bunch of fantasy companies out there that actually give cash prizes. But DraftKings and FanDuel are probably the two most popular. If you've watched a football game recently, you have probably seen at every break at least two commercials for each. Right now, they are the highest uh, volume advertisers on professional football. Higher than beer, higher than McDonald's, higher than whatever. They are literally the highest volume as far as advertising. So very, very, very popular and they have a good deal of money behind them. Some of their um, uh, partners and people that have invested in both of these companies, there have been some professional football owners like Robert Kraft of the Patriots. Um, ESPN is, is not an investor, but they are kind of like a partner. There's a lot of advertising uh, partnerships there. Um, and so these are major companies. These are not fly-by-night you know, entities. And how it basically works is you would uh, basically draft a team every, every week. You have a salary cap, so you just can't go uh, draft the best players at every position because you're not going to have enough money in your salary cap to do that. The only way that you really win is kind of by finding, you know, players that no one really expects to do well or players that are expected to do well, but um, there's not a whole lot of people basically drafting those players in whatever game that you're playing. So um, that's a little bit of background. Now, here's what this, vi this video is primarily about. On October, um, I believe it was October 6th, which was yesterday, uh, a report uh, was put out, and it was a, a, new, a news report, that there was a DraftKings employee. Now, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to, um, I don't want to demonize him specifically because from my understanding, him playing the games was within the rules. So I'm not out to demonize him. But I think it's the overall policy that allowed him to play. So here's basically what happened. This particular employee works for DraftKings, okay? And he went in on a $25 um, game, basically, um, with the rival FanDuel. Now, DraftKings and FanDuel, even though they're two separate companies, their statistical analysis, the way that their games are set up, the value of the players, all of those things are almost identical. So if you have information from one, it's very easy to use it as far as on the other. What this particular employee allegedly did is he took information from DraftKings as far as, as information that I would have access to. Let's just say, you know, what players are hurt, what players are doing well player performance from past games. Um, that's information that while he may be able to access it quicker in a more concise manner, I have access to that information too. I just may have to search for it a little bit more. So I really don't have a problem with that. But he had information that in no possible way could I ever hope to have. He had information that had to do with how many people were drafting a specific player, which is huge. That's really huge. Because the only way that a person can really do well at fantasy football, and especially in these, in these cash games, the only way that a person can really do well is to find players that are doing really well but that other people have overlooked. And if you can stack your roster with enough of these players that are doing really well, but not a whole lot of people are actually buying into them, 
and that means they're also at a lower price, you are at a, mar a marked advantage. I mean, a marked advantage. This would be analogous to if you were doing stock trading, which you know I do, I do a lot of day trading. But if you were if, if this was a stock and you had this type of information, and you were and you were doing this, you could go to jail for it. It would be called insider trading. Period. Point blank. That's it. You have information that other people don't have access to, and then you're going out and you're placing bets on it. And so this particular employee, he worked for DraftKings. He went in on a $25 game on FanDuel and ended up winning $350,000. Now, here's where the problem comes in with that. Um, I've... I've played on DraftKings, I've played, I have not played on FanDuel, but I do have a lot of friends who have played on FanDuel. And for the most part, the little kind of group that I'm in, that we kind of, you know, talk football, and I have some family members involved in it, some really close friends involved in it, for the most part, I would probably say we're doing better than the average person. Um, one, because we look at it from a more of a, while we're football fans, we look at the fantasy part of it really on a statistical basis. You know, we kind of don't let our emotions pick our, our, our players. So I would probably say, me personally, I have won maybe three or four times as much money as I've actually put in. So I'm, a, I'm ahead of the game. Three games into the season, I'm ahead of the game. But here's the issue, is there's going to be, in this particular case, okay, it was a $25 game. This guy won $350,000. He was the top guy. What did number two get? Number two got screwed. Because if number two did not have access to this information, and the number one guy did, the number two guy probably missed out on $150,000. He probably could have very well got screwed out of $150,000. And number three person got screwed out of money. Number four person got screwed out of money. All the way down to, you know, the end person, which could have been, you know, position number 500. Everyone moved down. Now, this particular employee, I can't necessarily criticize him because it wasn't against the rules. And that's the thing that really bothers me. That's why my anger is more directed towards the companies of FanDuel and the companies of DraftKings because their policy was... Hey, if you work for us, you know, let's say I'm an employee of DraftKings. FanDuel or, or DraftKings specifically said you can't be involved in games with us because you work for us. That's that's unfair. You would have an unfair advantage. But we have no problem with you going to a rival company or you going to another company and maybe using our data in order to get a marked advantage in a game over there. Now, as far as the companies go, um, they have to pay out the money anyway. So it's not as if there is a motive of a FanDuel employee going to DraftKings and taking their money. That's not really the case because FanDuel has to pay the money out anyway. DraftKings has to pay the money out anyway. That money, they're not going to get to keep, so it really doesn't matter to them necessarily who gets it. But if you're a player and you're involved in these games, and let's say you put your $25 in, if there's 10 players ahead of you that worked for the other company and they had this proprietary information, they had this information that under no circumstances could you ever acquire. And it's not minor information. In fantasy football, it is huge. It's literally the difference between, you know, you being a winner and you being somewhere in the middle of the pack. It's that, it's that crucial. And so all of a sudden, if you're in a game and 10 other employees or 10 employees from a rival company, they're in that same game with you and they end up ahead of you, you know, you really got screwed. Because theoretically, on any other type of business, if this was stock trading, if this was any other type of business, they would not be allowed to be involved in the game. 
because they have information that no one else has. It's considered insider trading. And so this, this is one of those things where I'm really kind of pissed off at DraftKings, really kind of pissed off at FanDuel, because they did not prohibit their employees from being involved in this. Now, I understand if I worked for FanDuel or if I worked for DraftKings, I would want to play the games. I definitely would. And maybe they should have anticipated it and had employee-only games. Where if you're an employee of FanDuel, here's FanDuel. We have our own little pool right here. And here's the cash prizes. And here you go. And employees have at it because you all basically have access to the same information. And the same thing with, with, with DraftKings. Or they could have allowed uh, um, play in between the two companies, between employees of the two companies. But if you were an employee, you had to be in a special uh, pool and a special game to avoid other people like me and like mostly everybody else out there from being at a marked disadvantage. Um, as of today, which is um, October 7th, Today, October 7th? Today is October 7th. So as of October 7th, uh, FanDuel and DraftKings have both decided that they will no longer allow their employees to be in, in anyone's fantasy games, whether it be their own fantasy games or whether it be with a rival company because there's a possibility that, you know, it's unfair to the other players. You know, it's it's... I would not be surprised at all, and I don't know if it's something that I would do, because, like I said, I I haven't lost any money. I haven't even put really that much money into it. I have not put that much money into it. It's just kind of a little fun hobby for me. But there's some people out there who play these games as a source of their livelihood, and they are professionals at it. They do a lot of research on it. They put you know, eight hours a day or five hours a day or two hours a day or whatever. There's a significant amount of time that they devote into it. And this is a source of income for them. Uh, I, I would not be surprised at all if those people were to file a class action lawsuit. Because something like this, under no conceivable way is this fair. There is no conceivable way that any reasonable person who's been involved in business, who's been involved in gambling, who's been involved in almost any type of situation where a conflict of interest could come in. No reasonable person could say that this is fair or that this is just. And there's, there's a person right here today who has lost $100,000. I don't know who that person is, but whoever came in second place to this guy, I guarantee you, they lost a a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, depending on what the payouts for second place was. That guy should be suing. If I'm that guy, I'm suing because the policy was not fair. Um, and it's something that they should have known. Uh, one of the reasons that I pointed out who some of the investors and who some of the partners were is you take Robert Kraft. He is a partner. I'm not sure which company he's an investor in. But the NFL does not allow their players to be involved in fantasy football for cash money. Why? Because they have an unfair advantage. They have information that no one else could have. And it has to do with the also integrity of the game. They, they don't want football players gambling on playing football. That opens up a whole bunch of you know, it it opens up even the perception of problems. You know, I, I can tell you how many times has someone decided not to kick a field goal. If gambling was allowed within the NFL and if players could do it, you, you know, it would be a Pete, Rose sit, a Pete Rose situation all over the whole league. So I don't know, me personally, what I'm going to do as far as FanDuel and uh, DraftKings. I think I still will continue to play, uh, only because it is more. It is a social activity that me and my friends we kind of you know jump into, and and we have our our little rivalries between each other. But um, I, 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 it's it's been tainted. 
you know, the, the whole thing really has been tainted. And maybe once money got involved um, in fantasy sports, it was it was bound to get tainted. But this was kind of one of those things to where friends and neighbors and brothers and sisters and everyone could kind of get involved in. You could play a game for $2, you could play a game for $5, whatever the case may be. Um, and you really did have the possibility to win a, a, a lot of money. You know, like I said, this guy put in a $25 game and won $350,000. So there really was a possibility of, of all of a sudden doing really well. If you were, if you were good at it, you, you know, maybe you broke even. Maybe you won, you know, twice what you put in or three times what you put in. And, and, and there you go. That's kind of cool. Uh, but the whole thing has been tainted. It really has. Um, me personally, I hope regulation comes in. I'm not primarily one of those people that is like the government needs to come in and regulate sports or the government needs to come in and regulate this. That's not... That's just not me. But anytime you have a situation where you have consumers and you have some type of gambling going on, um, I think you do need to have someone overlooking the whole process to make sure that there is some sense of fairness for the average person like myself and like I'm sure you, know, you out there if you're playing these games. There does need to be some overriding regulation to say that these people down here can't be screwed. These people down here have just as much of a right uh, to have a fair chance at winning as anybody else. So honestly, this is one of those few situations where I, 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 I welcome the government kind of coming in and regulating the heck out of this whole thing and saying, hey, here are the rules and if you work for these companies, you can't do this. And here's how these games have to be played, and it needs to be fair for everybody and all the parties concerned. And, you know, if I was one of these players that came in second place or third place or tenth place, you know, if, if I came in tenth place on, on a, a $25 game or something like that, you know what? I would, there's some information I would want to know, and here's what I think that they should release. I think it is incumbent on DraftKings and FanDuel to release, not necessarily the names, because those people, it wasn't against the rules for them to do it. But, I think it's incumbent on all of those companies to, to release the number of people who were employees who won games and what position that they won. So if there's, you know, a whole bunch of employees that were in all of these games I want to know, not necessarily their names, but I want to know, okay, an employee won this game. An employee, 10 employees came in, you know, 2, 8, 10, 100, and that's where they, they came in. That's relevant information, and I think that information needs, needs to come out. Apparently, the um, New York AG is looking into it. I hope he finds that information, and I hope that the people who really got screwed out of some big winnings... I hope they have their day, their day in court because they do deserve it. Um, do me a favor. If you disagree with me, leave me a comment. If you agree with me, leave me a comment. Please subscribe uh, because I do kind of want to make some more videos on this particular subject once, you know, things kind of, you know, once they decide what they're going to do. As of right now, it's just a big uproar and the companies have decided to not allow their employees to play the games. But I, you know, but there is an investigation by the New York AG, so I, you know, we'll just see how that how that turns out. Uh, again, like I said, please give me a like if you like. Please subscribe, and thank you very much. Bye bye.